Men and boys have always built models of the mechanical devices around them. Jet aircraft zoom through the skies at supersonic speeds. Thousands of their miniature replicas lift themselves into the same air in city parks and football fields every weekend. pilots are men and boys, learning the art of aerodynamics and having a lot of fun at it. It was inevitable that modeling would grow to embrace our newest great adventure, the conquest of outer space with rockets. From Cape Canaveral, huge space rockets blast off for the boundless voids of space. football fields and cow pastures across America, the microscopic brothers of these impressive missiles are also climbing into the blue, built and launched by men and boys whose imaginations have caught the challenge of space. Although model rocketry is therefore the newest of hobbies, its appearance and development were inevitable. And like other hobbies, model rocketry is safe, educational, and fun. Model rocketry grew out of model aviation and is greatly different from another form of rocketry called amateur rocketry. Amateur rocketeers are interested in building big rockets made of metal and powered by home-brewed fuel concoctions that sometimes give them tremendous performance, but most often lead to nothing more than a huge explosion. On the other hand, Model rockets are no more dangerous than model airplanes, and years of experience have proven this. There are three things about model rockets that contribute to the safety and enjoyment of this hobby. First of all, model rocketeers don't make their own rocket engines. They leave this sort of hazardous business to professionals who know what they're doing. Instead, they buy ready-made engines, factory-loaded, and ready to be inserted into their models as replaceable cartridges. These commercial model rocket engines are the world's most reliable rocket engines. Over one million of them have been made and used without harm. The second item that is unique about model rocketry is the material used in the models. Lightweight as well as high strength have always been requirements for flying models of any type. Model airplanes use balsa wood, paper, and plastic to get this low weight and high strength. So do model rockets. Model rocket bodies are made from paper tubes or balsa. Their fins, noses, and other parts are made from balsa or plastic. Sometimes a few small metal parts are used, but never a steel nose cone or a piece of gas pipe for a body. With these common hobby materials, it becomes a simple thing to build a model rocket. Ordinary hobby tools can be used. Hobby shops have become supply houses for model rocketeers as they purchase model airplane glue, paints, balsa wood, and similar things with which to build their models. A model rocketeer's shop looks no different from that of a model aviator, with the possible exception of a lathe on which to turn noses and other round parts. Such very little heat is generated by model rocket engines that there is no need to build models of heavy metal parts. 
The third and final feature of model rockets is their recovery devices. All models must have them. These recovery devices range from parachutes to gliding wings and are designed to bring the little vehicle safely back to the ground so that they can be flown over and over and over again. Some model rockets have actually flown hundreds of times. With the foreknowledge that he's going to get his model back after its flight, a modeler can afford to take the time and patience to build exacting scale models of real rockets, such as Araby, Iris, Asp, V2, Viking, Thor Abel, MX-774, Veronique, and scores of others. Let's take a close look at a typical model rocket. Its engine is simply a cardboard tube filled with solid propellant that slips into the rear end of the hollow paper body. Also glued on the rear of the paper body are balsa fins to keep the model straight and true in its vertical flight path, like feathers on an arrow. Model rockets don't fly in the ordinary sense of the word. They have no lifting surfaces, such as wings, to bear them along. They are propelled upward by the small jet of gas from their small rocket engines. They won't fly horizontally like an airplane. On the front of the paper body tube is a balsa nose cone, so built that it can slide off. Just behind the nose cone is a parachute, streamer, or other high drag device. This is popped out of the model by the engine itself at the top of the flight. On the side of the paper body tube is a smaller tube that slips over the round steel rod that is used to launch the model. In the United States, the primary organization of model rocketeers is the National Association of Rocketry, a nonprofit group affiliated with the National Aeronautic Association. There are members of the NAR everywhere in America and it is the largest such group in the country. On weekends during fair weather, you will find the various NAR model rocket clubs out on their rocket ranges in Denver, Colorado Springs, the Air Force Academy, Long Island, Langley Air Force Base, Connecticut, and many, many other locations. Although model rocketry is a very individualistic hobby where everybody builds their own personal models, it's also a group activity at its very best, where everybody works together to fly. A model rocket range is a little Cape Canaveral. Once the range is set up and ready to go, everyone gets busy to prepare their own models for flight, noting in the meantime what the other guy has dreamed up since the last time. Recovery systems are packed into the tiny models, and little rocket engines are installed. Model rockets come in many shapes and sizes. When a model is ready to go, it is given a careful and thorough safety check by an adult member of the NAR, just to make sure that something has not been overlooked because of excitement. Items such as center of gravity, fin alignment, engine mounting, recovery system properly packed, and other such safety points are carefully checked. If a model passes this safety check, then and only then is it assigned a launcher. Some of the launchers are simple steel rods. Others are towers into which the models slide between guide rails. Although model rocketeers sometimes tilt the launcher slightly away from the vertical to compensate for wind drift, model rockets are always flown in a vertical direction. Model rocketeers are interested in seeing their models go up into the sky like their big brothers at Cape Canaveral. Once all the launchers are loaded with models, the call goes out to man the range stations. Everyone has a job to do. The firing officer takes his post while the electrical firing leads are being hooked to the engine igniters. Model rockets are always launched by controlled electrical means. The other range personnel stand by. Then everything is ready and the launching area is cleared. 
There are no massive concrete bunkers, no blockhouses, no revetments on a model rocket range. They aren't needed. But everybody stands back because the models go so fast, it's difficult to see them otherwise. The safety officer gives the all clear. The safety key is inserted into the firing panel. All stations ready. The countdown. Panel is armed. Time is running. X minus five, four, three, two, one. Up goes the model, reaching for the clouds. Back go the heads to watch it. A hundred yards away, two telescopic tracking stations follow it up. Finally, the parachute blossoms forth, lowering it back to Earth where the recovery crew is waiting for it, ready to bring it back to the launching area and its owner. Meanwhile, the tracking station operators, having tracked the model to the peak of its flight, report their tracking data to the launching area by telephone. There, with slide rules, trig tables, and simple computers, other rocketeers calculate the altitude reached. This goes on all day. Sometimes over a hundred models are flown. When model rocketeers aren't flying for fun, they're flying in competition under the national rules of the NAR. There are 24 different competition events for altitude, scale models, spot landing, payload carrying, flight duration, and other sporting contests. Once each year, the NAR holds the National Model Rocket Championships with handsome trophies and prizes given to the winners. Many well-known organizations have recognized model rocketry. The Boy Scouts of America have become interested in the hobby for a possible merit badge. The United States Air Force has watched model rocketry grow and, in 1961, approved the hobby for its airmen and dependents. The Air Force realizes that model rockets, as well as model airplanes, can do much to help train their people in science and engineering as well as safely helping youngsters become acquainted with the space mission of the Air Force. Yes, it's a great new hobby. For model rocketeers are the only rocketeers who can, all by themselves, design, build, and fly, in safety, their own rockets. In the years to come, perhaps it will be some young American who walks the craters of the moon and the sands of the planet Mars. He may have started on his long road to the stars by building model rockets, following in the footsteps of his comrades in aviation who got their start by building model airplanes. One thing is certain. We are going into space, now and in the future. And our scientific hobbies, such as model rocketry, will help by giving men a better understanding of the way the universe works.